this morning. I'm grateful that you are here. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask um, our vice president to come. That's one of your remarks. Is you're going to ask me to introduce yourself. I'll start with them last. So you better introduce yourself. I'm going to start start right here with this wall line. Okay, so let's start right here with introduction. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good morning. I'm Angela Susan Bell. I'm from the Deputy Ministry, and your president, your your illustrious president, is my pastor. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I am Stella King, pastor of Great United Friends of Christ, um, Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm glad to be back in among you this morning. Glad to have you back, Stella. Can we give God praise this morning? Good morning. I'm the pastor, Kathy Heron. I'm the assistant pastor of Pastor Michael Church. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. And, um, my name is Elder Linda McCoy. I'm a member of the same day tonight. I'm glad to have you. We're going to see if I guess, and we'll be too late on, okay? All right, right, right here. Oh, but you guess. Um, Good morning. My name is Rev. Captain Gilmore. I'm from Touch and Line Street Ministry, and we have an outreach event coming up on the 17th of October at Foster uh, Street from Winter Team on Preston Street, and it will be from 10 until set up and start at 8 a.m. You're welcome to come out and Enjoy and help us serve the community. Amen. And if you'll get us that information, we'll get it to our webmaster and yes, Miss Skip, and we'll get that out, okay? All right. Thank All you. right. right here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Deborah Smith. I'm the wife of Reverend Ted Smith, and I'm a member of the Second Missionary Baptist. Good morning. My name is uh, Reverend Ted Smith. I'm the interim pastor at Second Missionary Baptist Church and the secretary for the Union Missionary Baptist Association. It's good to be here. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Smith with the LC Land. Um, I'm a community advocate member and public as well. Okay. So if you need some folks side and going on and somebody let you get some stuff out, she is a lady to see. She's all in the community. So we thank God for her. Good morning, Charles. Good morning. Good morning. I'm one of the last metro and married. And uh we are here at the Solid Rock Bible Church where we major on the major and minor on the minor. <laughs> and the major is the word of God. Teaching the whole word of God in order to make man whole. Come on, and get the word of God. Oh, oh, good morning, everyone. How you doing this morning? Um, I'm a member of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, and um, I also serve as the webmaster for uh, FCCMC. And I look forward to working with everyone. Yes, yeah. and we are thankful for her. She will help get stuff out on our website. I'm um, getting ready to work on the Instagram. So thank you. These two ladies are going to make some stuff happen. So we appreciate it. Good like morning, everyone. I'm um, Elder Ronnie Love, and I'm um, of Tabernacle Middle School. My pastor is uh, Bishop Maxi D. Johnson. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Elder James Gray, Tabernacle Middle School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Georgiana Pinkney. I am an um, evangelist, and I attend Covenant Love Church, where my pastors are Al and Taylor Rice. 
and I also am the president of Greater Life of Fayetteville, which is a nonprofit organization where we reach out to what we call at-risk kids who, when school was in, when the kids were placed on out of school suspension, we gave the parents the option to bring their child to us free of charge. We work with them, we give them tools to make good decisions, we turn them back to school. And also we have the after school program we call Customized Schedule, where if the child is on the verge of suspension, the parents can still bring them to us and we work with them. We also offer a five week summer program for those who are struggling uh, with academics and behavior issues. And we also um, have parent workshops uh, for the parents to give them tools as well to work with their children and the school to build better relationship and communication. And last night we had our follow up um, parent workshop by Zoom when uh, Dr. Connolly was online with us and the school district to help the parents to go through this virtual learning. So we're here for the community and I love to see we're better together. We're better together. Yes, we're better together. We thank Dr. McPeen. One of the things we do here, we keep getting to grassroots. So she was our recipient. Um, was it last year? Last year. Last year. No, no, this year. This year. This year. So we give back. Um, and we want to support those that's out in the community doing something. So we thank God for what she's doing in our community to make it better. At this time, um, I'm going to ask the Vice President to come back and he's going to talk about voting and he can also, if we met for those that didn't meet him earlier, he introduced himself at that time also. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, again, good morning to each and everybody. Good morning. Everybody. 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 You know what? You better start enjoying yourself yeah. while you can and make yeah. some time that you can. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you, yeah. the Lord will give the Lord praise. Yeah. 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 Back to back, two weeks back to back last mm -hmm. week, and then turn around and did a wedding. People checking out of here. <laughs> but yeah. amen. And I'm yeah. glad to be among the Lord. Ah, yes, yes. yes. All right. And every time I think of the goodness of the Lord, yes. Yes. No, I have done for me. Yes. Yes. I got to yes. shout out how it is. He's been good to me. Yes. 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 But uh, I'm, I'm William L. Neal, pastor of the New Covenant Christian Faith Church Ministries. I've spent 27 years as pastor of the AME Zion Church, and then God called me out to, to plant a church, and we've been there for eight years now, and we're still going. We also have a financial services company where we help people to show people how to have their goals to meet up with their assets. So we told you to do a total repositioning of your assets, where your money go. Every Friday night, we do a Financial Friday uh, a website on a uh, uh, podcast on Facebook Live. And um, that's 8 o'clock every Friday night. You ought to tune in because it's education. Mm -hmm. That we can start not only preparing ourselves to go to heaven, but also to get out of poverty. My philosophy is if I can get people to heaven, I ought to be able to get them out of poverty. Mm -hmm. And so we want to, want to invite you to be a part of that. I, I pray that each and every one of you have been keeping up and uh, with all of the advertisement that has been going on on television concerning uh, the election. Um, I, I simply use the theme, don't be fooled. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled. If you want the same thing that you've always had, then do the same thing you've always done. But if you want something different, you got to do something different. That's right. That's right. It's insanity when you keep doing the same thing and expect different results. That's right. Right. Amen. So we just cannot affect the change. We must effect the change. Yeah. And the right. difference yeah. is, is when you right. effect the change, you bring about a desired result. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have to do now. We know we can't. We are at a, a, a time where I know that certain things are going to be affected according to what some people are saying if certain people get back in office. And I didn't I didn't work and live to be 67 years of age, praise the Lord, in order to just lose stuff now. Mm -hmm. I believe in protecting what God has blessed me with, and I'm going to do that with the both. 
I'm going to do that with the boat. I pray you're going to do that with the boat. You have within your packet uh, that says why your boat counts. Why your boat counts. They have done something a little different this time. Usually when they send out uh, the information on judges, they do not have uh, what party affiliation they're, they're on. Now they do in the families that they came out. So this thing will outline for you everything that's on the ballot that you may not see on the ballot. Know the people that are on there. Know the people that are on there. I also work at the precinct in my, my home precinct, Old Mill. And it bothers me when people come in and ask me who, who I'm not supposed to vote for. I can't tell you that. I'm limited as a, as a precinct worker from saying to you who to vote for. So do your due diligence. You can get a, a, a copy of your sample ballot for whatever precinct you work in. Uh, you can go on the North Carolina uh, Board of Election, State Board of Election website, and you can pull it down and see the people you're voting for and know who they are. Know who they are. Don't depend on the people that are standing out there handing out flyers and that kind of thing. And you'd be surprised the number of folks that get voted upon because they get flyers from those people. So we've got to we've got to do due diligence. We are at, at a point where uh, there are a lot of things at stake. Uh, I forgot to left at home, but a friend of mine sent me a uh, what is called a political uh, uh, bulletin, where it talks about how the churches are going to be taxed, and so it is saying that you know in your five hundred one c three you won't be taxed. But let me tell you something. You better prepare yourself, prepare yourself, prepare yourself, so that if some folks get back in office, there's some things coming down that we are limited in talking about right now that you need you need to prepare yourself for. And so if we can't talk about it in here, uh, we got to get people to vote, but we got to help them to know who to vote for. Amen. We got to help them to know who to vote for because many of them don't know. And so I would ask that you would read this, this piece on democracy in North Carolina, uh, protecting your uh, 501c3 status. Uh, but 45 has said that, you know, he has done some executive order that eliminates that, to not muzzle you when you're talking about uh, politics, resources at your church. So you can help people to do voter education, voter registration, and don't worry about your 501c3 status. You can help them with voter education and voter registration. So we, we've got to do that. That's what we have now. Let's do this and make it happen so we can do something for our children in the future. Then, any questions? Uh, One comment, brother, right. if I may. Uh, praise the Lord. I've already voted. Voted absentee. Yes, yes, sir. And it's the first time, and I was a little leery of it initially, but I didn't trust the mail service. I took my ballot to the election yes, board. Yes, sir. Right. And you have to sign them in at the election board. Mm -hmm. So it's A-OK, -okay, okay? Yes, sir. So get your ballot. If you don't want to be in a line, and take them down to the election board. Don't trust the post office. Yes, that's a, that's a great point, because uh, what you can do is you can get that absentee ballot and it'll tell you who's on if you have to vote for them. But you don't have to, you don't have to use it. You still can go there and vote if you want to do so. So that's a good way to know who you're voting for is by getting the absentee ballot, okay? Can you still go down to the board of election and get the sample ballot? I've tried. Uh, they're keeping it closed, I guess, except for special training. Um, but I have not been able to go and, and, and get it. You know, I don't know if they're letting certain people in to do it or not, but I would go to the state, the state board of election website and get it from there. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, all, Mr. Vice President. Again, we're on WIDU on Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, the NWACP president was there, Mr. What is that one? With, um, with, Wednesday, and so um, we talked about voting then. So thank you for educating us on that again. As the uh, Minister Council, we cannot tell you who to vote for, but know that your voice 
is a vote. Your vote is a voice. So use it. Study. Find out who you voted for, as he said, don't just go vote. No. And you're not just voting for the president, as he said. And that would outline for everybody that you're voting for. It's not just a presidential campaign. You need to learn about your local government, who you're voting for, okay? All right, can we give God praise for our vice president? All right, and this time I'm going to ask Madam Trent if she's going to introduce her herself and anything she has to say this time. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I am Yvonne Hodges, the treasurer for the FCCMC, also the pastor of Solid Rock Bible Church. And again, we are so glad that you chose us to come and do your breakfast here. As the treasurer, I, this morning I have a couple reports and I'm going to ask that the members before you leave, if you come and see me, and I will give you the end of the year report, which shows what we took in for the MLK breakfast and what we spent out and what we have left over and also a monthly report for um, July and August. If you are a member and you have not filled out the membership application form, please fill it out and see to it that our secretary uh, gets a copy of it. It is very important for us to have this on file. Also, your annual due only $100. $100 for the whole year. And so if you have not uh, paid your annual dues, please get them in as, as soon as you can. This year we're looking at a whole new way of having to do things. And right now we are not sure if we're going to be able to do the MLK breakfast the way we've done it in the past. And we know that the MLK Breakfast is our biggest fundraiser. This is the fundraiser that helps us to be able to give out the scholarships that we give. In the past, we have given um, $10,000 uh, for the students, $1,000 per student. Also, we've given out ministerial uh, scholarships as well, as well as community. So we really need your support and we cannot do this by ourselves. We are better together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's, she's right. We don't know how to go to the records, but I told him, I brought a shoebox to a meeting and said, we got to think out of the box, okay? So we just want to figure out how we have to do it. So again, thank her for all that she does. We are very transparent. So again, if you are a member and you want to know where your monies are going to, see her, she has a report. You're not hiding anything. So make sure you see her through a member and she has a report, a detailed report of where every dime goes. Amen? All right. And this time I'm going to ask Madam um, Secretary to come. She's also standing in for her husband, Apostle Gibson, who cannot be here. He is our new members chair. So she's going to come and say what she needs to say. She's going to do the penny of our new members in presentation to them. One had to leave, but I think we do have one of them here. So I'm going to turn it over to her. The morning, one and all. Morning. I know you all expected Mr. Perky here. <laughs> so he sent me instead. <laughs> well, God bless you all. And of course, I'm happy to be here. Very, very thankful. Like um, Mr. Vice President said, we should be very happy Amen. and rejoicing Amen. to Amen. be above ground, still Amen. having an opportunity Amen. to get all of what God put inside Amen. of us, the poverty into the earth, Amen. and we can leave a legacy, Amen. not just for our children, but for everybody's children. We need to leave our name in this earth, and our name must be connected to 
to be the name. The name of Jesus. Yes. We have mission and work to do. And you don't want to go before what you think is your time. You still have something to deposit. You get it out there. Do it small, do it big. And don't worry about the rest. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. Let that overflow go. You never know who it's for and what they're going to do. That one person might be the Beverly Gibson that you give birth to and that helped her to get out here. Mm -hmm. Might be that Martin Luther King Jr., that Moses. You don't know. Just sow those good seeds. So Amen. That's right. I have had a lot of death in my family this year. A lot. And even this week, we buried a cousin. And her, uh, the cousin's mother, grandmother, died a week later. They were all in the house together. So uh, coronavirus is real. Mm -hmm. It's real. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. But guess what? We can say every day because we can petition God as much as we want. His day, day, bind that corona in the name of Jesus. Amen. End it. He can do it. It looks like it might not happen. It looks like it'll be here until next year. But we serve the eternal God. We serve the one that can say it is done. And if we petition, won't he do it? Yes. Okay, act like it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, before I do that, I do want to ask anyone that did not get all of the sheets that are up here, because I did not give them to you, please forgive me and make sure that you do great information, voting information, as well as, this is NAACP. <coughs> And I purposely looked online so that I could give this to you. Their mission is to secure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights in order to eliminate race-based discrimination and ensure the health and well-being of all persons. So, I know you can't wait to get this application. <laughs> Fill it out. Turn it in. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Do your part. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. That's all right. Amen. Amen. If we may ask and celebrate our new member, Reverend Calvin Gilmore.
Thank y'all for letting me get that in. Amen. 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 Good fruit now before Jesus come and check it. Amen. It's all right. All right. All right. All
Thank you, Madam Secretary. So you see, we are alive in what we believe in giving God praise. Open the CCMC. Amen. 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 This time we have a guest, and we are honored to have him with us. We have Mr. Marvin Weiss Jr. from the FTCC. Um, some of you may have heard about this initiative. So he's going to come and talk with us about the Cumberland Grow Initiative. While he's on the way, can we put our hands together?
<laughs> my little thing. I didn't know what I should pass the ball yeah, inside. Yeah, okay. so like, yeah, yeah, that's my inside. Would you? I'm sorry, man. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay. And so, please, thank you. I don't, I don't know if I have enough, but I'm, if I don't, I have cards and things that make sure as well. So, um, you're not going to leave without something for me. Um, so, it's 11 programs. Uh, the program, uh, the class is from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday. And on Fridays, each individual uh, is mentored and they meet with me, right? Uh, and they meet with me to develop their career plans, their strategies, their goals, uh, uh, obtain resources that they may need. Um, you know, right now, you know there's a demand for a child care. Not just here locally, but nationally. Child care is an issue for our people. That's right. Um, and I know that, um, you know, due to COVID-19, there's been issues with child care and treatment of damages. So how do, we, how, do we, how do we work together to figure this out? This, this is redundant. I'm not asking you to do this, <laughs> but I want us to begin to think about how, how we can work better together. How can we work better together? How can we get together to figure these things out, to eliminate, to eliminate some of these barriers that these young people are going through? Not just young people, adults, grown, grown people are having the same issue. And so the focus is, is to help individuals um, develop skills in the, in, the, in the industry of construction and trade. They will be earning national, nationally recognized certification, um, along with um, the, the other certifications that come with that, which is um, HVAC, um, uh, forklifts, um, electrical, <coughs> plumbing, um, uh, carpentry, uh, cabinet making, uh, OSHA, they're, they're nine classes. But the first class is called NCCER, which is the nationally rec recognized uh, credential that this individual, if that person decides to leave North Carolina, they can go to South Carolina, California, or wherever he or she moves to, and that will be uh, recognized as a credential uh, throughout the nation that they earn through this program. And so I know I, there was a post out there, a Facebook post out there that says it's free. Yeah, but what is really free? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> What's really free? Yeah. There's a cost for everything. Yeah. Yes, it is. So each person who comes to my door and I, I do an intake assessment with them and so on, um, they have to understand that there's a cost associated with this. It's mm -hmm. no cost to you sitting before me, but there's a cost in the price that you pay. Because you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices, not only for yourself, but I'm investing in you. Right. Our community is investing in you. The people that brought the people that referred you are investing in you. So you have a whole lot of people that are supporting you. And when you don't feel like getting up in the morning to come to this class, believe me, I'm going to be calling you. Mm -hmm. Not only am I going to call you, I'm going to call the person who refers you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Guys, I've always operated better, best in crisis. That's my, that's my, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And so, this is a crisis time for us. Jesus operated better in crisis. Mm -hmm. The disciples operated better in crisis. Clarity becomes clearer in crisis. So we're in this time where we're living in a crisis. So now we all have to be sharp. We all have to be alert. We all have to be, as a young as a kid, stay woke. <laughs> you gotta stay woke. So this is an opportunity I'm presenting to you uh, this morning, before you, I should say, um, you know, for you to uh, hopefully take that to those who may come to your mind right now. You probably think about somebody right now that this program, could, they could benefit from this program. And I encourage you, that person you just talked about right now, contact them. Have them call me. I, 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 I request the red phone call. I, 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 I want this. Phone call me, email me, whatever you need to get to me, get to me. 
Refer them to me. You don't have to ask any, answer any questions. Refer them all to me. Refer them all to me. And so, anyway, but so anyway, but no, so so um, so that's so I want to get that tip it out front. I want I want to feel uh, how I feel about this program. It's important to me. It's not only important to me. It's important to people who put this together. There, there are more people behind me than you see. You, you have uh, the vice president of FTCC, FTCC, um, Dr. Searles. We sat down along with the, the sheriff, uh, county commissioners uh, from both Spring Lake and here in Fayetteville, from Fayetteville, um, the DA's office. Uh, of course, I work with uh, Commissioner Charles Evans with Life of the Living Project Trust. He and I work together. Um, with the expungement program, um, and a number, a number of other officials, uh, the, the chief of police and so on, are all behind me, in which you don't see. They're all behind us. Now, we're coming to you to ask for your help, because you're on the front line. You see them, you hear them, you, you're a shoulder for them. You're, you're a sounding board for them. And so, I need your help, because I want this to be successful for them. It's a two-year grant from now, but it's going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to stay. Because the need is great. They need to be. And so, it's not just a program where they take their classes and move on. Um, I'm going to be with Father. <laughs> They're not <laughs> I'm going to be with them uh, even after they finish their class. I'm going to check on them uh, at least a minimum 90 days out to ensure that they're on track, to ensure that the resources are there, to ensure that whatever, whatever they need may be, you can still provide that service for them. So we're not just leaving them. Okay, you're done. Here's the certification. Take a picture. Uh, yep. That's not how we design. That's not the purpose of this program. The purpose of this program is also uh, is to make them, um, I like to call it competitive in the market. You know, some people have the skills, you know, they can build a house from front, uh, from, from later footings and everything and so on, but don't have the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And so you still get, I don't care what you can do, you still get 725. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long you've been doing it. You see that's at the But now, when you achieve this and get your certifications, you feel more professional about yourself. You feel more competitive in this field. And you actually become the person you always thought you could become because now you have something tangible in there, right? Even call me a letter, right? <laughs> so, is, is this boy? a uh, specific uh, group of people, or I mean, um, those that are incarcerated, once they get out of incarceration, will this apply to them as well? Yeah, I, 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 I work very closely with the uh, federal count, federal county, uh, Richard County, yeah. uh, Pastor Ryan. Uh, he and I work real close together. Uh, in fact, we have a few reports in that, in, that, uh, in that program. So it's not just limited to um, those who've been formerly incarcerated. Um, those who've had long-term um, issues of finding employment, you know, been unemployed for a number of weeks or months and so on, um, and want to do something different. I have young ladies who are coming into the office now uh, who are no longer on that track of the CNA track. Like I said, that's, that's getting full. I mean, I see CNA, I turn around the corner, I see CNA, and I'm like, so, yeah, I see CNA? So that, that market is becoming saturated. And it's very limited as far as your income at that level. So construction and trade, just the start, just the minimum starting rate of pay is about $15 an hour in any trade. Uh, it's just a nice. Um, while they're in school, mm -hmm. uh, do they get paid or no? They're just um, you have a great question. This has come up several times. Unfortunately, there's no stipends for, for the program. Where the person who's enrolled uh, will receive a stipend. Uh, um, that's, uh, they, uh, 
that would be fun sometimes. But that question has come up uh, because how many individuals need, you need money. Yeah. And then I talk to them all the time, like, well, Mr. Price, I love you, this program is eight to five. You know, I'm trying to get this money. Look, you have to do what's in the best interest of you and your family. If getting that money is, is important to you, get that money. Right? People need money. People don't have time to, some people don't have the time to, you know, eight to five, they, they're trying to get over and over this money. And I, I get that, I understand that. You know, you know, you have to engage your own level of sacrifice. I can't make a decision for you. Or no, can anyone in, in the room? And so we have those thoughts this morning. On the type of spectacle for those that do can't work, um, on the type of spectacle, go ahead. Good, great point. Now, unfortunately, they're, they are, they are set as, um, as, as they're built. So, the past is on the test. Um, so, when this uh, program uh, really gets its legs and really begins to be um, solid, then we're going to look at offering classes in the evenings and weekends to make it more flexible for those that have been uh, committed to doing that. Um, since this is startup, um, we're going as is. <laughs> you, know, you know, we're going as is. So, classroom sizes due to COVID 19. Uh, is a maximum of about 15 students um, per classroom. Oh, per, yeah, per classroom. And so we're having, we call them cohorts. So each group, uh, our first group of um, students in the week will begin on the 28th of this month. And then the second group will begin in January, and so on and so on. So within this group, the maximum uh, number of students can be in the group is about 15 uh, to be within each cohort. But as, as it's built, uh, the past is not, they're not less than that past is built. Can I ask a question? Um, since we're talking about connecting, are, are you, uh, is there someone else to talk to that is open to adding an additional piece that can help these people to the process? Such as? Well, uh, I'm a financial planner. Oh, okay. And people make money, but after that, they blow the money. Right. Yeah. So they don't have no plans mm -hmm. after they get the money, after they get the job. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, our people are not taught to build wealth. Mm -hmm. And so that's a concern of mine, and I wrote a book on it. So how believers can it's a guy that we need to build wealth. Mm -hmm. So I understand that these folks are not there, they're not there, they might be trying to get the job now. But once they get the job, I don't see anything on here that talks about or a class that they can be in. Is how to manage that money. Yeah. And personally, I get tired of seeing them always going to the other side instead of people like me who know how to do the same thing. Exactly. I, I so I'm just asking, you know, is, 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 are you open to, uh, I don't have to get paid. I just want to teach you. Yeah, so I, just, I just wrote your name now. You brought in my book. <laughs> So, so yes, the answer to you, sir, is, is yes. Um, um, again, it's uh, we're better together. So, um, we can't be a barrier to ourselves, yeah, right, right, right. And so, um, if we restrict ourselves and restrict others from doing what they do and provide that service for us, then we're not being better together. Yeah. And so, believe me, I got your check, I got a check right here. You need some phone number? <laughs> so, yeah, so, and, that, and that's a part, so, I'm just brought that up. So, um, each person who comes to, come, comes to the program once they go. So, they have to pass the drug screen initially. The initial drug screen has to be passed before they can go into the program. Uh, so, if a person does not pass the, the initial drug screen, uh, we don't, I'm not going to say, well, you're done. I'm going to keep you on the waiting list and stay in touch with you um, before our next group of classes to see, okay, are you ready? <laughs> you did do it, <laughs> you know. Um, but if that person uh, says, because we, uh, up front we pay for, we cover the cost of all um, of everything that uh, the students are uh, going to have to pay, which is just me, and also the classes, the books and things that actually we cover that cost. Now, the penalty is, you know, we have to have some teeth. You know, um, there's nothing, everything has to have a consequence. So the consequence would be um, the person uh, doesn't attend classes 80% 80 80 of the time, then that person will be discharged the program. If that person does not meet with me, um, um, 
they failed to meet with me three times to be discharged from the program. When I say meet with me, participate, that means participate in case management sessions that we have. Uh, and so those are only, only things that they really have to do is to maintain their passive attendance. Uh, we, do have, we do provide bus, bus passes for those that don't have um, transportation. Uh, and, and so we, and we also work really closely with the transit, um, he's in transit, in transit. Um, uh, the director there, he's, he's very flexible uh, when it comes to students um, and so on. So we have, we have a great relationship with him there as well. Um, so yeah, so there's a cost if the person doesn't attend any of the classes and they fail uh, to meet their case management responsibilities uh, with me as well. Um, so they do enroll with NCC Works, um, NC Works. Uh, they have to enroll through them uh, to obtain their resources. And also, and when they become a student at TCC, they now um, can obtain all the resources available to them on campus. As we also have a career development um, program there too, where they're gonna be um, learning soft skills. Uh, communication, interviewing, resume mm -hmm. building, um, and those kinds of things. Uh, so we, in, in financial empowerment, uh, will be coming up really soon too. <laughs> yes, that was a great question. But yes, yeah, so, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very excited about the program. I'm happy to be before you this morning to, uh, to present this program. Uh, I believe that, uh, as we mentioned before, we're better together. Yes. And now that you know, let's let's grow. And this time we have another um, guest. Um, it's called the Bill's Voice. Um, I think some of them actually went to DC um, on the 57th anniversary of the Mar March on Washington. We actually did something here, right here in Fayetteville. And I'm telling you, if Dr. Kirby Johnson didn't bless our souls. And so we have some CDs um, of that, and, and our vice president will get them to you. Um, we got a, a CD for everybody to get that message. Everybody needs to hear that message. But this time, I want to invite um, Sister King and the Bill's Boys. You may have heard of them. They were down at the Parker House doing tremendous work right here in the city of Fair. But a lot of times, we don't get to know people. We go by what we hear and we go by what we read. Right. So we need to get to know people for ourselves uh -huh. before we pass judgment on what we're doing. Hey, right. well, thank you for the first four. So we all don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Frank Thompson. I'm um, a member of Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church where my pastor is Richard E. Booker. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to anybody in this church. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't been in church. <laughs> And we hear a lot of y'all probably seen stories or clips on the internet or just anything probably about me or just us at the market house. And people think we were like an organization before we came here. We actually formed right there that day. Yeah. We were just, everybody came from different places and different parts. Like me, everybody's familiar with Marco Scott Road and Mark down at Mark House the first time. Big Frank? I was in jail. Mm -hmm. The first day of the, the march, um, when Mr. George Floyd got murdered. Killed by law enforcement. I went to jail with a smile on my face. <laughs> he did for real much. I literally. Uh, I came in at the last minute um, for the protest that we had in Pembroke. Um, that's how I met everyone. Um, I think that's when everything kind of got real down there because they weren't too happy about us being down there. Um, so that's when I kind of jumped on board. So I came in the game. 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There's a few other members, but we're really here to change stuff. We're gonna be the change. Like, this is the last time that they're gonna mess with us. Period. It's the last time. So, we're big on integrity, community, freedom, and justice. We're gonna bring change through direct action, community outreach, education, and economic empowerment. <laughs> there is power of a dollar. Mm-hmm. There is power of a dollar. Um, this organization is young. Um, we're we're um, kind of radical. No, we're, no, we are radical. Well, I'm proud to say that. That's right. We're not we're not doing things the old way. We're doing things our way. This is gonna get lines up somewhere in the Bible. Between Genesis and Revelation, <laughs> you know, that's a lot of books we're going to be playing with. Right but um, I just want to leave a statement for y'all. Uh, we must fight. We must fight. I believe that God didn't make no weak Christians. Mm-hmm. You know, today as a weak Christian, right. and if you are a weak Christian, you need to go somewhere and get some strength. Mm-hmm. And um, I just want to um, remind you that uh, when the Moors approached the coastline of Europe, everyone aces the ships, taking all that they did off the ships. The Moors would abandon their ships and destroy their own transportation back home. These brave black men would occupy a foreign land ready, prepared to fight. They were ready to fight and not retreat. Mm. Ready to fight and not run. Mm. And they left themselves with only two choices. You either going to have victory or you're going to die. Mm. And right now we are in the battle right now as we speak. And we got two choices. We either going to have victory or we're going to die. Mm-hmm. Foundation of Black Americans are the sense of those who were kidnapped from their homeland, transported to the shores of America. We have been at war since slavery was, since the first slave was brought here to America in 1619. But I'm so glad that we serve a God that always been on the side of the oppressed people. I'm here to remind somebody that God is against racism. God is against white supremacy. God is against police brutality. So if God is against racism, oppression, white supremacy, and police brutality, then men, women of God, you must be oppressed. You must be against oppression, racism, and white supremacy also. It is a requirement that all of y'all must declare war on oppression right. against black people and all others that are affected. We are in the battlefield. It's time to fight. We must come together in order to move forward. Say that one more time. We must come together in order to move forward, young and old. Towards victory. In order for change, we must change ourselves. They must change in the black community. There are many types of relationships that must be united. We must reunite the father in the homes of the black family. We must strengthen the relationships of the parent and the child. Respect, restore the respect factor of the young and the elder relationship. Restore the love of a man and a woman. We ain't say no man and man. I ain't say no woman and woman. I said restore the love of a man and a woman. Man, let them take pride. Let them take pride. Let them take pride in being in a committed relationship. I like to call it a committed marriage. This is a battle we must fight. We must construct our own education. We must educate the mind of the youth in order to change to come. We have the resources of our own to, to have our own schools, to have our own programs. We must expose our youth to trade schools, financial literacy. And the ability of one on credit. Mm. Support the attendance of HBCUs. Mm. We can no longer ask the government to approve our education system. We must approve our own education yeah. system. Somebody say amen. Yeah. 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 We can't be quiet when we see injustice. You can't be quiet. We must protest like the Hebrew boys did in King Nathan's face. Yes. They refused to kneel in front of the only enemy at the sound of a horn. We must fight. We must, we fight. must march like they did around the city of Jericho. Seven times they marched. And they had some strong legs, so Jericho was a small city. <laughs> we must march. We must continue to fight. We must be against politicians and lawmakers that oppresses black people and poor people. We must support those who have a black agenda, who has a poor agenda. We must know who we're voting for. We come this far by faith. Lean. I said lean yeah. on the floor. We can't turn around. We come this far by faith. I used to hear that song as a little boy growing up in church. 
And when I think about the words of the song, it reminds me that we got this far by faith. Yes, we made progress in America by faith. Mm -hmm. Through slavery, we made it by faith. Okay. Through Jim Crow, we made it by faith. Mm -hmm. Through economic education and oppression, we made it by faith. Right. But by faith, we knew that we could lean hey. on the Lord. Yeah. So through slavery, we was leaning on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Through Jim Crow, we was leaning yeah. on the Lord. Right. Through economic education and oppression, we was leaning yeah. on the Lord. But oh, 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 All right. oh, 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 can't turn around. Can't turn around. No, can't turn around. <laughs> we made too much progress to turn around now. Yeah. Too many black folks died during Jim Crow to turn around now. Oh, yeah. Our mother, our father worked too hard to yes, turn around now. Your grandmother, your grandfather worked too hard to turn around now. Yeah. We can't turn around. We won't turn around. The God is on our side. In conclusion, yeah. I'd like to say this. In the words of the late Dr. Samuel McDonald Jr., mm -hmm. the father of the McDonald sisters. Yeah. You can't lose when the Lord is on your side. Right. Right. Somebody got to have a question. Well, I got a question. All these powerful people in this business, probably a good time to ask the Lord for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord, fix my trade. Pastor, the preacher, something here. It's a good time to ask the Lord. Ask the Lord about something. <laughs> 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 but, um, we don't have questions. We don't want to fix. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, we believe that it's powerful to ask the Lord for something. We believe that it's power in finances. Mm -hmm. The power of a dollar. We all in this room have one dollar. If <clears throat> you could give a dollar, to a homeless man that you don't know, don't know his family, don't know where he comes from. And 75% of that time, that one dollar is going to go to an alcohol or drugs. But we're going to have a drive, and it's called a power of a dollar. And we put our dollars together as one and allocate that money to go towards the youth to make a change. We don't have to ask the state government for help. We don't have to ask the federal government for help. But I believe that we had the financial resources in the black community that save ourselves. Mm. I'm a Christian, but I love Louis Farrakhan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Christian, but I love Louis Farrakhan. Mm. And, and he reminds us that we have financial ability to save ourselves. Mm. Yes, ma'am. I have one question. Do you have any initiatives or events coming up in the near future? Um, right now, we're doing the Power of Bell Garden, and we're planning to do We'll be present at World Homeless Day on October 10th to present um, for our community awareness lines. Um, she has an award that she wants to present to someone there for World Homeless Day. So we'll be at that event. We'll have the information in the community. Yes, sir. And definitely, I got a question. How many of y'all would like to see Vicks come back for a day? Oh, that shit is right. Vicks, Vicks, Vicks. I just did a chicken and fat y'all. And we're also working with the Orange Street School. Uh, and by community, the Orange Street School down on Orange Street. We're actually working with them to try to restore it. And bring some programs there. You know, if you know we fed the homeless and everything downtown. So everything we did downtown, no matter what people may have said on the internet and how it may have looked, mm -hmm. we fed what? How many people? Over two thousand places. Wow. Wow. In six days, in seven days, we gave over um two thousand places. We was a young group of people that said no more. We took over a market house that used to sell slaves, but a group of young black people came together and said, This is our house now. And we occupied that house. And we had to help from Cumberland County. And I was one that was very critical of the black church. I felt like we didn't get a lot of support from the black church. We didn't see a lot of reverence, a lot of pastors, a lot of evangelists from the black church. Mm -hmm. And um, in order for things to change, the black church got to be involved. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't got this far. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't make the civil rights if it wasn't for the black church. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not so much about Martin Luther King. It was a lot of other pastors, maybe ever. Mm -hmm. So a lot of other people that was involved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now he just get a lot of credit. Mm -hmm. was a lot of locally black um, pastors that died. Churches burned down to the ground from people who praise God, but because they were white, they looked at us like animals. Mm -hmm. So we must come together to move forward. And it's going to take the black church to be the lead front on this movement right here. Mm -hmm. Let me just say this, Big Frank. And I called him out of the radio because yes. I saw, I heard you guys yes, down in the black yes. church. But I had to let you know, all the black church didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And yes. so we needed to communicate. Did I not tell you that? Yes, yeah, so everybody don't know. 
Um, so don't put a group of all together. Right. And that's why you're here this morning, because I think we need to know, and some of us don't know. So that's why we're working on our communication, so that we can get this out here, okay? And, and the pastor pulled me to the side and said that, that he had a concern too. And I, I was saying, like, man, this is 2020. We got Facebook, we got Instagram, we got WRAL, CNN, Fox News, and all so on. So um, if you didn't know about it, um, I can understand. But for the ones that knew about it, and you knew why it was down there for, you knew what our agenda was there, and you didn't come up and show, I was talking directly about you. So I ain't gonna say it for you behind the curtain. Tell it. Tell everybody else. Tell it. Tell it. But like I said, I believe that God made strong Christians. That's right. God made me a Christian, and if you hit me, I'm gonna hit back. Tell it. I'm scared to go to jail. I'll die. If I die, I'll die on my feet, not on my knees. All right. Let me ask you a question. We're probably going to hear a what's going on. And how are we going to be able to support you okay. in a godly way? In a godly way. Yes, I can make sure, like I said, all the information, any events that we have coming up, I will make sure that, because I'm actually friends with the chair on Facebook, oh, that she gets it and then she can share it amongst you guys. Mm -hmm. I think I am following the Facebook group as well, so if you okay. don't mind me sharing some of our information okay. on your page, I'll, I'll be more than happy to do so. Either you sharing know how to get me directly, and we all communicate on a daily basis. <coughs> Anytime, if you want to deliver this, you're sharing, you got my direct cell phone number. I got your sharing number. So if you got anything, I'll definitely send it to it. Let it know. And I'll probably be frank. One thing I would say is, and I'll go sit down. One thing I do believe in that in order to have a healthy relationship, you're going to have healthy communication. That's right. That's We're right. going to disagree on some things, y'all. Yeah. But because we may disagree on something, we can still have mutual respect for each other and move forward. Yeah. So in order for us to um, have a healthy relationship, we got to have healthy communication. <laughs> if you want to help us out, I believe in the power of a dollar. I'm not asking for ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. I'm asking for one dollar, and I believe I can reach ten thousand black people in Cumming County that's willing to donate one one dollar, one dollar a month for one year. One year, that's twelve dollars in one year. I get ten thousand people with the same mindset, the same goal to donate one dollar. Now, if you don't have the same mindset as me, I don't want your money. You can come up here with ten thousand dollars. I'll throw your money away. I, I don't want it because that's blood money. To me. I need money that. That, that people believe in the same thing that we believe in. The improvement and the power of the black community. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm just going to say the same thing is that, um, um, you know, there's something called the Patriot Act. Mm -hmm. And the Patriot Act is, is, was created because of 911 and, and terrorist groups and money laundering. And so with that act, I want to help you all to make sure that when you start getting that money to set it up and know how to deal with that money to banks. Absolutely. And loan companies. So they won't black line you or red line you as a money laundering or a terrorist group. Yes, sir. So you have to be careful when you're raising money under a movement, even though we know it's good. Yeah. I mean, it's for a good cause. But because these people don't, they don't care and don't understand. Mm -hmm. They make laws to try to trap you. And I'm saying, as I'm saying to anybody else, I'm good at what I do. You look like it too. I'm good at what I do. Go ahead, man. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. And see, this is what it's about, with Keith, being better together, dialogue. And see, you got peace, and he says, let me help you. Absolutely. You know, so this is what it's about. We are better together. But those of you that may not know Keith, I think he first came in the paper. When President Trump, Trump was here, y'all yeah. yeah, remember that? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. But uh, thank you, Bill. Let's go. Thank you. Dr. Price, if you come back, also um, to King Jones and the Bills Board. So that's how they got on the trip. It's okay. Um, okay. Um, for gratitude and blessings, and we thank you. Um, come on, um, Vice President. Well, let me show you my stomach first. We can see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
All. 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 We'll underline that word. All. all. He cleanses us from all sin. Yes. All sin. Glory. Hallelujah. Let us pray. I'm a great heavenly Father. We thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Father God, we thank you for the work that you're doing in our community, the work that you're doing with your people, Father. Father God, we pray right now that you provide a healing of this land, a healing of this nation. Father God, we ask that you provide uh, a vaccine to help counter this coronavirus pandemic that we're going through. Father God, we pray right now for the election, the upcoming. We ask, Father God, that you put the right person in yes. place, Father. Yes. Father God, we know that we have no control of what goes on. But we know, Lord, that by faith we believe in you, we trust in you, and we know, God, that you are able yes. to do the impossible. Yes. And we say thank you right now. Amen. And Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. Oh Lord, my Savior and my Redeemer. And let us all say amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. If I had to use a subject today, it would simply be walk in the light. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on in our society. Coronavirus, pandemic, police brutality, racism, hatred, discrimination, Robbery, killing, lying, disrespect for our brothers and sisters, and disrespect of our men and women who have that have served and are serving in our military by politicians to include our commander in chief. You're right, you're right. We as a society, as a nation, members of this world and children of God are living in a world of chaos. A world of darkness. And my brothers and sisters, it's getting dark. Mm -hmm. Darkness is not a thing in and of itself. It is the absence of light. Mm -hmm. And even a tiny light help negate absolute darkness. Darkness symbolizes the absence of God. Mm -hmm. Which is why the very first thing that God did during the creation in Genesis is the bring light. Mm -hmm. It's symbolic combating the darkness where Satan works and began to illuminate God's creation. Mm -hmm. A similar thing happened to us when God began to work in our minds. God consistently uses the theme of light and darkness as an analogy for his calling and the need to separate ourselves from the present world. Mm -hmm. We got to separate ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can't be like the world. Right. In and, and 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, yes, sir. a royal priesthood, yes. a holy nation, yes. his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. John states this even more clearly in 1 John 1, 5 and 6. He said, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie mm -hmm. and do not practice the truth. Mm -hmm. My brother and sister, light represents what is good, mm -hmm. pure, true, holy, and reliable. Yes. Darkness represents sin and evil. Mm -hmm. To say God is light means that God is perfectly holy and true. Mm -hmm. And that he alone can guide us out of the darkness of sin. Right. Spiritually, darkness does not exist in him, not even one bit. Light is also related to truth in that it's, it exposes whatever exists, whether it's good or bad. Right, right. right. Huh? Yeah. In the dark, good and evil look alike. Uh -huh. But in the light, 
they can be clear and distinct. Yes, right? Amen. Just as darkness cannot exist in the presence of light, sin cannot exist in the presence of a holy God. Amen. Huh? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Talking to everybody. If we want to have a relationship with God, we must put aside our sinful ways of living. That's right. To claim that we belong to God, but then to live for ourselves is hypocrisy. That's right. Christ will expose yes, yes. and judge such to see. See, you can hide it from the world, yeah. but you can't hide it from God. Yeah. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, yes. we have fellowship with one another. Yes. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us mm -hmm. from all sin. Mm -hmm. Sin by its very nature brings death. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. but the gift of God is eternal life mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not die for his own sin. Amen. He had none. Right. He died for the sins of the world. Amen. When we commit our life to Christ and identify ourselves with him, his death becomes ours. Huh? Amen. His death becomes ours. And we can walk in the light. Right, right. See, Jesus has paid the penalty for our sin. His blood has cleansed us. Just as he rose from the grave, we rise to a new life of fellowship with him. Huh? I'm here to tell you today that no matter what you have done and what you are doing, you can rise. Above it all. That's right. That's That's right. Right. Give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. Walk in the light. Yes. And when you're walking in the light, you must let your light shine. Yes. All right. Yes. Let your light shine. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to illuminate a world of darkness. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, the world try to hold you down. In the world will try to pull you back. But we must be strong in our walk. We must be strong in our belief. We must be strong in following Jesus Christ. Amen. And not allow the world of darkness pull us down into the gut. Glory, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Glory, hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 11 and 13 said, put on the whole arm of God, yeah, right. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, yeah. but against principalities, yeah. against power, yeah. against the rulers of darkness of this age, yeah. against spiritual hosts of wickedness mm -hmm. in the heavenly places. Yeah. Therefore, Take up the whole arm of God Amen. that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And I'm here to tell you we are in the evil day. And having done so to stand, it's time for us to rise and walk in the light. Let our light shine. Stop hiding the light and be the light. Make me 
change. Uh -huh. You can't make me turn against God. Mm -hmm. You see, you can't make me do anything because I know too much about God. Yeah. And for us to know the things that we need to know about God, we need to study His Word. We need to follow His Word. We need to be obedient to His Word. We need to lean on Him. Huh? Somebody said, I, I don't know whether I can stand all along. You don't have to stand alone. God has a shoulder for you. And all you need to do when things go to get rough, when you begin to struggle, when people try to lead you the wrong way, lean on you. Glory and hallelujah. Glory and hallelujah. You see, Jesus, the light of the world, desires to banish the darkness and restore his wisdom everywhere. Light is uncomfortable to those accustomed to the dark. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Light exposes that which is hidden in darkness. Mm -hmm. It shows things as they really are. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. We try to put things back into the corner. Mm -hmm. Put things in the closet. Mm -hmm. Try to hide because you know it's wrong. But you see, light exposes that. Huh? What's done in the dark will surely come to the light. Glory, hallelujah. To walk in light means to know God, understand the truth, and live in righteousness. It is time for us to stop hiding and walk in the light. We may be living in a dark world. However, we cannot live by worldly values. Right. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 12 and 2, and do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We must wisely decide that worldly behavior is off limits. Mm -hmm. We must pray and ask God to allow the Holy Spirit to renew, re-educate, and redirect our minds yes. so we are truly transformed. Mm -hmm. If we are too much like the world around us, oh, we are worthy. Oh, Don't hide your life. Well, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, you are hiding your light when you are quiet. Mm -hmm. right. When you right. should speak up. Right. You are hiding your light when you go along with the crowd just to get along. Mm -hmm. You are hiding your light when you deny your light to shine. Yes. You are hiding your light when you allow sin to lead you in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. You are hiding your light when you don't explain the word of God to others. Mm -hmm. You are hiding your light when you ignore the needs of others. Mm -hmm. Be a beacon of the truth. Don't shut your light out from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Don't shut your light out. Let your light shine. Don't be afraid to walk in the light and illuminate the darkness in a dark world. Don't be afraid to let your light shine. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, right. but of power yeah. and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah. Live for Jesus. Yeah. If you live for Jesus, you will be the light of the world. Yes, sir. You see, proper light will not, and in fact, cannot be eaten. Huh? Right. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. We must walk in the light and let it shine because it gives light to all who is in the house and glorifies our heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Glory, 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 glory. I don't know about you, but I want you to know right now. And, and and I'm going to pause right there. See, I can't make you serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
I can't make you walk in the light. I can't tell you or make you let your light shine. But I can talk about me because I know that I'm going to walk in the light. You see, I'm going to walk in the light. I'm going to let my light shine because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my spirit of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? No longer will I hide my life and I'm going to let it shine. No longer will I be silent. I'm going to speak up for righteousness. My brother, keep on talking. Keep on speaking. Keep on standing. Your crying. Stand up for the Lord and he will lead God and protect you in all your endeavors. Yeah, Let God have his way. Let him lead you. Glory, hallelujah. God is able. He's able. No longer will I allow sin to lead me in the wrong direction. No longer will I allow false teaching about God and his son Jesus. I will explain the word of God to others. No longer will I ignore the needs of us. I know God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to walk in the light, that beautiful, beautiful light. You see, if we walk in the light, and He is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. I say to you, my brothers and sisters. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Be fearless and walk in the light. Let your light illuminate the darkness of this world. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Let's give God some praise this morning.